Hi, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe and support me. Today we are going to be talking about volcanoids and volcanoid belts. Volcanoids being an entirely new class of celestial bodies for us. Let's get on with our topic. In the late 1850s, an astronomer named Urban Le Verrier made detailed calculations of Mercury's orbit and found a small dispensary in the planet's per helium per session from predicted values. This famous astronomer had proven track records of doing the same for Neptune. He is the one first predicted, as per his mathematical calculations, the existence of Neptune. The calculations are so accurate that when John Gottfried Galley discovered the planet, it was just only one degree off from the predicted position. So, as per the calculations about the planet Mercury, he predicted that the gravitational influence of a small planet or ring of asteroids within the orbit of Mercury would explain the deviations. After some time, an astronomer named Edmund Lascarbelt claimed that he has seen Leverius proposed planet transit the Sun on that very same day. The planet was named Vulcan. Later, a number of searches were made for the planet Vulcan, but despite occasional claimed observations, no such planet was ever confirmed until today. From the hypothetical planet, the name came up, Vulcanoids and Vulcanoid Belt. If they do exist, the Vulcanoids could easily evade detection because they would be very small and near the bright glare of the sun. Due to their proximity to the sun, searches from the ground can only be carried out during the twilight or solar eclipse. In 1970, when a solar eclipse took place, a professor of astronomy named Henry C. Corton observed the photographic plates of the eclipse in great detail. Later, he and his associates noticed several objects which appeared to be in orbits that are close to the sun. Corton believed and was confident that out of all the objects he saw, seven of them were real. He estimated that the volcanoids are about 130 to 180 kilometers in diameter, was orbiting the sun at a distance of about 0.1 astronomical units away from the sun. Many other images on his eclipse plates paved the way for him to postulate the existence of the volcanoid belt between Mercury and the Sun. Other elite intramercurial objects may exist. It could be even unknown comets or small volcanoids that we have not yet discovered. Previous searches, particularly from the Stereo spacecraft, rule out asteroids larger than 6 kilometers in diameter. That doesn't mean it's there or not. Maybe smaller volcanoids could be there. If it does exist, any volcanoid could be up to 6 kilometers in diameter in a circular orbit near the outer edge of the gravitational stable zone of our Sun. The minimum size is about 100 meters. Between these upper and lower limits, a population of asteroids between 1 kilometer and 6 kilometers in diameter is thought to be possible. They would be almost hot enough to glow red hot. Scientists believe that the volcanoids would be very rich in elements with a high melting point such as iron and nickel. Volcanoids could be similar to mercury in color and albedo. It could also contain material left over from the early stages of the solar system's formation. There is evidence that Mercury was struck by a large object relatively late in its development, a collision which stripped away much of Mercury's crust and mantle. And explaining the thinness of Mercury's mantle compared to the mantles of other terrestrial planets. If such an impact occurred, 
much of the resulting debris might still be orbiting the Sun in the volcanoid zone. If we could find volcanoids, it could provide us with a lot of valuable information with resources and materials from the first period of planet formation, as well as the conditions prevalent in the early stage of the solar system. Every gravitationally stable region in our solar system contains objects, non-gravitational forces such as the Yarkovsky effect, or the influence of a migrating planet could have depleted this area of any volcanoids that could have been there in the time. We'll keep on searching for them, but unfortunately, until today, we can't confirm the existence of it. Great astronomers and scientists are observing the sun when the solar eclipse happened, for getting a breakthrough on these matters. Even we're sending missions for this purpose. These spacecraft were sent to observe the volcanoid belts, but all of them failed to detect any volcanoids until today. They are the following with their launch dates and space organization. NASA's two stereo spacecrafts were launched on October 25, 2006. The SOHO spacecraft was launched by the European Space Agency and NASA on December 2, 1995. The Messenger space probe launched by NASA on 14th January 2008. Thanks for watching my video. Please like and share. Bye bye.